this week also, I happened to visit in another one of the local yeshuvim, uh, Beit El, Bethel. And as you know, it's a large Jewish town with many synagogues and a very large yeshiva and some smaller, smaller yeshivas and uh, Bati Medrash, just like Kuchav Yaakov, on a large scale, very well established. And I like going to Jewish communities like that. I had to Dava Mincha, so I went to Dava Mincha in one of their larger shuls. And looking around, and I see, wow, it's amazing to be among Jewish people. Why? All these Jews, I don't know who many of them are, although people in the crowd spotted me because they're my former neighbors, came to say hello. Oh, don't you know someone else lives here also? But when you look around in a random Jewish synagogue in a majority Orthodox Jewish place like Beit El, what do you see? You're, you're surrounded by uh, by Shanim, Gomei Hasadim. Uh, you're, you're surrounded by Jews who are kind, they're compassionate, and they're uh, they're they're bashful, right? That's that's basically the, the mitos you see. They're all wonderful people. You have no violent criminals in a place like Beit Dale. Yeah, yeah, we have our Yates of Horrors and stuff, and everybody has their own misionos, but for the most part, there's no reason to have a police force in such a place. There's no graffiti. It is a wonderful place that even any non-Jew would actually love to, uh, where he would love to live, unless, of course, he, he's looking for a place that has a nightlife and you know, uh, casinos and bars and things like that, then he's not going to find that in a Jewish community. But if he's looking to live in a nice, safe place where to raise his own children, of course he would choose to live in that community or any other Jewish community, right? That's a good place. It's full of Jewish people. But the problem is, and uh, this is a big problem that we see is actually happening in front of our eyes. What is that? Well, we said the meat of stubbornness. The Jewish people have a meat of stubbornness. So in the first generation, it was, they had a hard time accepting the Torah. But once the Torah became part of their culture, their stubbornness means they will not give up the Torah, right? So too, their kindness and compassion to their neighbors is actually leading them to be, to be destroyed because they're by Shanim Rahman and Glomi Chasadim, that's too much in their nature. When they are faced with basically the Islamo Nazis, who like, even yesterday, more evidence of their utter savagery, okay, their eliminationist anti-Semitism, how they they will stoop, uh, no, they'll, they'll stoop to anything. They have no limits to the barbarity. Uh, which they will use against the Jewish people because these people, let's say Beit El, are so kind and compassionate, they have done nothing to protect themselves from what? What's right next to Beit El? A large Ishmaelite population center full of murderous barbarians who, when they get the chance, if they could get the Chatz Vashon, they, they're just itching for the chance to run over to Beit El and just utterly destroy the place, okay, mercilessly. And because these Jews in places like Beit El are, are like this, they have not done anything to protect themselves, and the odds are they will not do anything unless, well, even if they're forced to, they will not do anything that's remotely enough to defend themselves or protect themselves uh, preemptively. So uh, it's, it's, it's kind of scary. I, I see that our, our, our strong midos are being used against us, and that's the case usually in these wars. The Jewish people's proclivity to kindness and that's why we have to be told i was telling someone last week you have to as a soldier like the ramam says your job is to destroy the enemy and don't worry about being hardened by anything like that you see and the dead dead bodies of the enemy you have to because if you don't do it they'll do much worse they'll do much worse to you and they've already they say so they have shown that they will do so and the Swell needs to learn this it says uh in the Torah, if you do something that looks like it's not exactly the most merciful thing, put someone to death. It says that God will have pity on you and will give you the capacity for more compassion. It will make you a more compassionate person. And uh, like Chazal say also, you have if you have mercy on, on the cruel, eventually you'll be cruel to the merciful. Sholem El is the best example. And he is the person in this world who had the best mitos. So even the person with the finest mitos can fall into this trap. So like a for all of us. The ground Kuchav Yaakov is similar. And that's why we all have to be ready. So there's an ongoing war right now in, in these areas. Uh, the ongoing war. Why is the war going on? Because the authorities that be have basically made it lawless. If, let's say, the authorities would actually be even-handed to Jews and Arabs alike and not allow violent behavior and not allow any crime whatsoever, so the Jews would be flourishing. The problem is, for many years now, they've basically allowed the Arabs to... to uh, run rampant and run wild and do all sorts of things to especially Jews and outposts or just Jews who are in isolated areas. And those Jews have long had to basically take 
not the law into their own hands, but defend themselves. And then they've been uh, they've been libeled uh, around the world by Jews themselves in, in the land of Israel also as lawless uh, extremist settlers and the like. Of course, the Jews, who were mostly secular themselves, not settlers, and uh, of left-leaning politics, learned this lesson the hard way that it turns out that their brothers around here weren't being lawless and were, were mostly just protecting themselves from the same savages who destroyed their communities on Shemini Atzeres. So they learned, oh, it's not that these Jews were being lawless, it's that these Jews had been left completely unprotected by the official uh, security apparatus that also, lo and behold, also left them to die. So now everybody knows the truth. Okay? Let them run wild. Everybody learned the hard way on Shemini Sh Atzeres. We're not talking about lawless people or vigilantes. We're just talking about people who want to survive. And by the way, a good explanation given by uh, by uh, Rabbi Weissman about this one, which I agree with, I've always felt this, is also the opinion of my father-in-law. Oslo wasn't an attempt to try to, I don't know, create a new political environment and even create the Palestinian state. What it really was is an attempt to destroy the state of Israel slowly uh, and basically because, let's say, the people on top are, they do have a, the Jewish meat of compassion, they cannot go and destroy these communities. Instead, it's just been one turn their back or turn the blind eye to those murderous people who want to destroy Jewish communities. And by the way, they don't make any differentiation, green line or not green line, Israel proper or not, as we saw. They want to destroy as much as they can, wherever they can, and that's basically what's going on. The fact that there's lawlessness and the IDF is officially told to stand down and not protect Am Yisrael is not because there's this thing, as Fagan says, I disagree with him on this one, he says, because we've acknowledged another nation having sovereignty or rights to something, at tzedek, justice, in our land, and now we're competing. No, it's an active uh, attempt to allow the enemy to destroy us. Basically, they're completely passive, just completely stand down and allow parts of Eretz Israel populated by Jews, to be destroyed. That's basically what's going on, so we have to protect ourselves. 